What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. Today, we are going to continue our discovery journey of the new and amazing cold card wallet, Mark II. Uh, and today, we are going to do a very, very important step, and that is to make sure that you are always up to date with the latest firmware and that you do this upgrading process in a way that you check all the signatures and hash sums, okay? Uh, so let's get right into this. Uh, of course, you can get the cold card wallet at coldcardwallet.com. Buy it now. It is glorious. And today, the upgrade process. So you can check this at docs slash upgrade. Okay. Uh, and it, it says here for especially version 2.0.3, the one that we will change, uh, that we will upgrade. Uh, just to see a bit how greatly you can improve your experience with software. The signing speed is now improved by 3x. It will warn if the minor fee is over 5% of the transaction amount, and it was 1% before. So the hard limit remains at 10%, and you can configure that or disable it completely. Uh, the robustness, they've tightened the stack depth checking and increased the heap size shuffle some memory. Aha, I have no clue what that means. <laughs> Bug fixes, transactions with more than 10 outputs uh, were not summarized correctly, and that is fixed. And the other bug fix will be the consolidation transactions that move UTXOs within the same wallet are shown better. And we have a bug fix to better recovery from two complex transaction errors. And the do not forget your pin warning message is now more bold. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so first, what you have to do is click on this link up here uh, that will take you uh, to uh, github.com slash coldcard slash firmware slash raw slash master slash releases slash and then the release file of the most recent one. Uh, this link will directly lead you to the DFU uh, file, uh, which is then the already build and signed firmware, okay? I've already downloaded this, but you can also go to github.com slash coldcard slash firmware slash releases to get the source code uh, of all of them uh, and compile them yourself. Uh, but I will not be getting into this uh, since uh, I, th I think with the signature process that we have here, uh, where GitHub checks all the signatures uh, of every commit uh, in this release. And then also uh, what you can get down here, uh, this clear text file uh, is then a SHA-256 hash sum uh, of the latest release. Uh, and these two things combined, I think, are enough uh, to, to justify here um, yeah, the, the uh, quote-unquote trusting of the compiled uh, firmware, okay? So uh, I right here have downloaded both the, uh, co oh, whoop, the cold card uh, DFU file, right? And the six of the cold card. Uh, okay, uh, and well, who has signed this here? And that was signed uh, by Peter uh, Peter Gray, and you can get him on Peter slash Conalgo on GitHub or Dochex on uh, Twitter and Keybase, and he has here this uh, yeah this public key uh, which you can download here from Keybase, and he's already also committed to that in his tweets and in his GitHubs. Okay, so always verify. I have not yet met him in person, so I cannot verify in person that this is actually his key. But what I can do is do the GPG verify command of the six cold card. And then we see that the signature of this file was made uh, on Thursday, 25th April uh, with this RSA key, which if you double check here, um, A3, A3, uh, right here, that is Peter's key. Okay. Uh, and Peter D. Gray, right? But of course, uh, they, there is no certificate uh, with a trusted signature. Uh, so no one has signed Peter's key that, that I know and trust. And there's no indication that the signature belongs to the owner because I've not personally verified that this is actually his key uh, in person, right? Uh, but now we know that this file was actually signed by him. So now we have to check what actually the SHA-256 a checksum is for this file here. And we do that by SHA-256 sum and then the file. And this will lead us here to uh, this exact SHA-256 for this file. And as you see, this is exactly the same as the one here in the signed uh, change log message. Okay, F951218 and so on. 
so very good. Now we know that the release file that we actually downloaded is the same as that was committed to in this signature. Uh, and uh, now we also know, right, that, that all the uh, six within or all the commits within the release file now actually have been made by Peter. Very good. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to move this file right here, the 2019 uh, April uh, version 2.0.3 coldcard.dfu. Uh, we have to move this to our 16 gigabyte volume SSD card. Uh, okay, and we do that by copying this file to this folder, right? Uh, and now we see it already right here. Uh, very nice. Uh, pretty much all we have to do uh, is just get this firmware onto this SD card, okay? Now we can eject this, uh, this volume, perfect, and I can stop screen sharing now for a while. And I have right here, right, the, the SD card. And so I will take this out uh, and I will put this right here into the, into the SD card reader. And until it clicks, hope you heard that, uh, right? It's now in here. And in the main menu, so this is the really main menu where we start from ready to sign, uh, to passphrase, to secure logout, to advanced, right? Go down to advanced, and then you will see view identity, upgrade, backup, uh, and micro SD, okay? We, of course, want to upgrade. So you can see the first version, right? Show version for me right now uh, out of the factory is version 2.0.2. .2. Of course, that is the old version. So we want to now click from micro SD, the upgrade. And then it asks us to pick a firmware image to use, the .dfu. There is only one file to pick, right? Because we only have one file on this SD card here. And now we can select exactly which file this is, right? Uh, and a bit tough to read here on screen, but it's actually 2019 04 t 1440 version two of the cold card and so on, right? We know which file we put on there. So now I press start and it says loading. And we also have here this green LED light, which indicates that the SD card is in use. That is also new for the version two of, or the mark two of the cold card. Right, so another of these upgrades, now we actually know when there is something read or written uh, to the SD card itself. Another great security feature, right? Uh, and so what it's doing here is it's installing this entire firmware, right? And then in a later step, it's going to check all the signatures here on locally, um, right here, verify. Uh, really quick, right now, the, it's a red line, genuine, so... Uh, uh, or caution, right? Because we are actually meddling now here with the firmware, and now it is upgrading uh, the entire process. Uh, this autofocus is killing me. <laughs> um, but now that this is then done, uh, it will say verifying again, and it will load, load the cold card version 2.0.3. And now, okay, several things here. Uh, we're, we're back to uh, type in your pin prefix. Um, right, so so that means that we now have to uh, type in the pin again, but still the red light uh, is glowing. It says caution. Why does it say that? Because it is a new firmware, okay? The signatures here are intact. The signatures actually work out, but because it is a new firmware, we still have to be cautious because did we actually put this on there or did someone else put it on there, right? This is what this caution line is for. Of course, in our case, we actually have put it on there uh, and thus, uh, in the next step, um, we first, of course, have to type in our uh, PIN. So, and we have to check if the two words that we see is actually correct. Uh, in my case, that is the case. So I know that this is still my hardware device. Right? Even with a new firmware, uh, they, uh, I would get two, diff two different um, versions of these words if it is a different hardware. Okay, so these two words are hardware specific. Uh, and that means even if a malicious person uh, gives me the wrong call card, uh, I can see this. Uh, okay, so we go back here in the, in the main menu. We go back to advanced. Yes, and back to the upgrade. And now uh, we can bless the firmware, right? Because we have actually updated it. We've checked the signatures. We've checked the hash sums. Uh, and now when we, uh, it's going to verify one more time. And now the next time you start it, uh, when you load this up, it's actually gonna have a green light uh, with genuine 
because now the firmware has both checked and blessed. Uh, and this means we no longer have to be cautious. Uh, well, of course, you always have to be cautious, but we no longer have to worry too much that a malicious peer uh, has given us here a wrong cold card or meddled with our firmware, right? So um, the cool thing here about this upgrade process is uh, several fold. Uh, of course, we have uh, the commit signatures and everything, right? We have the SHA-256 checksum signatures. That is very good. Uh, then it's, again, cold offline communication here. Right? All we had on this SD card is the version 2.0.3 uh, file, nothing else. That is really, really cool. Uh, and the, again, the cold card has not touched a computer with the internet. So very nice. Uh, then before we can actually upload or, or integrate here this firmware, we have to type in the pin for the very first time. Right? Uh, and then we can load the firmware. Right? Here it, it will give us the different options that we have on this SD card. Um, but then also, uh, once it has done uh, with upload, we have to again type in our pin. And then we must bless the firmware. And without blessing the firmware, uh, and you can only do that when you know the pin, uh, you will always have the cautious light. Uh, so this is very, very nice. Even a malicious adversary here. Uh, if he finds your a cold card unlocked, yes, he can put a, uh, a SD card in, right? And he can upgrade your firmware, right? Because if it is unlocked, right, assuming that, but then it will, you know, exit everything. And then he will again need to type in the pin. And assuming the malicious adversary does not know that, he just found your cold card wallet unplugged or plugged in like this and unlocked, then he cannot bless the firmware again, right? And so you actually have to have knowledge of the pin in order to do a proper upgrade of the firmware. And you have to prove that twice. First, to load the firmware. Second, to bless it. And that mitigates, I think, a lot of attack vectors. And again, the design of the cold card here, as always, security focused on mass. So Pierce, uh, you know how the drill is, right? Uh, the cold card is awesome. You really should check it out. Uh, and of course, also check out all the stuff you're doing towards liberty.com and the worldcryptonetwork.com. Uh, because guess what? Uh, we team up here with Cold Card and the World Crypto Network to give you a, a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to get your hands on them clicky buttons of the Cold Card. And actually, uh, it's not just going to be one Cold Card that we give away. It's actually going to be 10 Cold Cards that we give away. Now, thanks to the awesomeness of NVK, he agreed to do a couple more. Um, but again, uh, not everyone can do this. But only open source contributors can get their hands on them clicky buttons for free. So either if you are an open source entrepreneur uh, contributing to any project that is open source, uh, then reach out to us and tell us why you need this, why it's so important to have your own keys and why the cold card is an awesome tool to have for any Bitcoin. But if you don't yet support an open source project, first, do it. <laughs> but second, then, uh, recommend whoever you think is worthy uh, to get their hands on the clicky buttons. Uh, and of course, if you know a couple great open source entrepreneurs uh, that, that deserve our praise, this is the time to thank them. Uh, and you don't even have to pay for it. Right? This is actually the giveaway thanks out of the heart of NBK <laughs> and the World Crypto Network. Uh, so, Piers, as always, thank you very much for joining me here today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.